Okay, hi there. I wanted to show you a really quick and great method for keeping rainwater fresh using a solar powered pump for your carnivorous plants. I raise Venus flytrap plants as well as pitcher plants, and you'll see them in a minute. And what I have here is I've got uh, a part of the gutter where I've taken the shunt off the spout so that it comes straight down into this trash barrel. And as you can see, there's also a hose attached to it because once it gets up to a certain height, it will then drain off the excess to go in the backyard so it doesn't overfill. Over here, you're going to see a slightly different version of my air pump, my solar powered air pump. This was my first experiment, I think. Yeah, and I used, as you can see, an old coffee, plastic coffee canister. And inside of it is. Again, as you can see, it's just a simple used air pump, a six to, I think it's like a three to six volt air pump. And uh, what I did was I took a piece of wire hanger and wound it around it so it was suspended and then hooked it into it and then used a little bit of silicone to hold it in place. Then I made a hole for the tube to have it come and connect to it. And nowadays what I do is, uh, I, I use the same method, but what I do is I put it inside of a piece of square Tupperware. But this worked out so well, and I've never had to, to alter it. I've been going now for about two years, I didn't feel the need to, to change it. So, yeah, as, as, as thrown together as it looks, it works fantastically, which of course I love. Now I'm going to put it into the sunlight. And here the air tube comes up, and what I did was I drilled a hole directly here. I want you to see just how much bubbles this is creating. Wow, look at that. And one of the reasons why I wanted to use a much larger uh, solar panel, and that one is about, well, it's probably about around 9 inches by 6 inches, something like that, 12 volts, is because this one has to pump a lot more air because there's a lot more water. And I recommend you buy one of these large, like 4 or 5 inch stones because they are heavy enough so that they sink down by themselves. And again, um, and the uh, solar panel is not even directly pointing at the sun, but it's large enough to where it can generate more than enough um, bubbles. And again, I've got a filter here on the drain off part so that the water stays nice and fresh every single day. Even if the sun doesn't shine for four or five days, this water will still stay fresh, not to mention the fact, because I keep it covered and bubbling, I can avoid a lot of problems such as mosquitoes and other waterborne nasties. Here's another adaptation that I have made, which is a canister, a watering canister. I've taken a piece of PVC, about the right size, put it up there. I think I have a little bit of silicone in there to hold it in place. I then take this, open up my rain barrel and plunge it in and fill it up. Now the reason for that nozzle adaptation is because I have some plants that need fresh water, carnivorous plants, and I use rainwater. And this is how I keep that fresh too. I did a video on this, but the sun wasn't bright enough to show how it's working, but this is the other version of my solar pump, and again, this is the one that simply has, I think you can see it there, it's got a little pump, wire it up with a piece of wire hanger, and then a little bit of silicone to hold it in place. Um, excuse me, this one's got a brace in it, and that has a little bit of silicone, it's just glued to the top. Needless to say, you should wait till that silicone dries before you use it. But this is how much water it's pumping out. I can use it in this configuration, or if I want to create more circulation in the system, I take this tube, a simple straight PVC tube, put it in there, get one end a little bit lower than the other end, and then the power of those bubbles, after I weigh it down with a piece of natural stone, of course you should never use anything artificial because Carnivorous, uh, carnivorous plants are sensitive. What happens is the bubbles come up and go through it just like a crude sort of a uh, air pump filter that you would have in an aquarium. Look at that. And it's just pumping out like crazy and this will help to circulate that water. And that's one of the reasons why I want to use uh, this is because it allows the rainwater to sluice through very quickly and circulate. 
And then when this takes over, wow, look at it go. And it's not even in, again, this isn't even pointed directly at the sun. That's about a six inch by seven inch one. And again, you can find those air pumps on eBay. They are used, so beware, but some of these have lasted three, four years. I even made a little repair shop in the back of them. As for the plants themselves, I'm about to have to transplant them because it is springtime, but you can see how healthy they are. And these are going to be my prizes right here. Oh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That, my friend, is a purple pitcher plant. It's green right now, but as you can see, it's brothers and sisters are beginning to bud off and just like Venus flytrap plants like that big mouth feed me Seymour feed me all night long however these aren't just beautiful and interesting plants they also have another service and that is they eat all sorts of pests mosquitoes bugs mostly the sort that you don't want around right now I have a screen over the top so they get plenty of sunlight but are protected from leaves foreign seeds and they're about to be transplanted because I'll tell you a secret for the best growth you must take off any flowering stems that come off these uh, Venus flytraps uh, cut them off at the base and then replant them in the springtime and they'll last a long time and you can recreate them by allowing them to bud off and when you do repot them in the springtime use fresh rainwater or distilled water and you use a combination of either, well, mostly sphagnum moss and a little sand, or maybe something like 10 or 20% sand, and 80-90% sphagnum moss. Never ever use any kind of foods, fertilizers, or anything. The whole reason why these wonderful plants exist the way that they do is because they need nitrogen, because they grow in nitrogen-poor areas. So you put food into the, uh, the soil, or the peat moss that they're in will kill them. More people have killed these by trying to feed them or by trying to put, doing silly things like putting live meat into the Venus flytrap. And the other way they kill them is they use tap water. Tap water is death uh, to most carnivorous plants, almost all of them. Uh, so always use rainwater. And since you can collect it and keep it fresh now using a solar powered pump, you have no excuse to not do so. Anyway, you take it easy. Bye.